Hello and welcome to your news and features electronic magazine that centers on the different facets of motoring. Now on its 34th year, this is Motoring Today. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss if we are really ready for cashless transactions. A road safety reminder on the Young Street Smarts portion centers on overtaking rules when in a multi-lane highway. This week's Bayon Tuper shall be about wearing a proper uniform of PUV drivers. The public service segment centers on legal load limits on NLEX. Showcase this week shall have the compact SUV from Honda, the CRV SX DSL 9 automatic all wheel drive with Honda Sensing. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us. Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA 2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. The Mitsubishi Mirage. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. When MRT3 trains began running at 40 kph back in October, the management promised that November would see the trains running at 50 kph. Promise fulfilled. Commuters should find it better riding the MRT3 now that trains are running at a maximum of 50 kilometers per hour. The time between trains at stations, or what the MRT3 calls headway, is now down to four to five minutes from eight to nine and a half minutes when the trains were running at a maximum of 40 kilometers per hour. These estimates are with at least 20 trains running. The MRT3 management says that travel time from North Avenue Station to Taft Avenue Station is now down to an hour and five minutes. MRT3 Director of Operations Michael Capati says that with the increased operating speed, MRT3 passengers can now expect faster travel time, shorter waiting time for train arrivals, and better and comfortable riding experience. 
The improvement in train speed is a result of the installation of the new long welded rails in all MRT3 stations as part of the massive rehabilitation program of the rail line being undertaken by Sumitomo Mitsubishi Heavy Industries from Japan. The MRT3 plans to run the trains at a maximum of 60 kph beginning in December. The MRT3 has seen big improvements in train operations as well as facilities and amenities at stations even under the COVID-19 pandemic. May this continue. The improvements, not the pandemic. The MMDA and the DOTR remain steadfast about closing the U-turns on EBSA to make way for the busway. There appears to be no stopping plans to close U-turns on EBSA as the DOTR continues to move closer and closer to complete the EDSA busway project. The U-turn slot, both northbound and southbound, located along EDSA near Dario Bridge, is now closed to vehicular traffic. Traffic signage to inform about the closing were earlier put up informing motorists about the closure. Motorists who use the U-turn were also advised to take the following routes instead. From northbound, going southbound. Affected vehicles may take the U-turn slot near Oliveros Drive in front of Shell Station. From southbound going northbound, affected vehicles may take the U-turn slot at Edsa Quezon Avenue flyover. The Dario Bridge U-turn slot is the fourth of 13 U-turns to be closed to make way for full implementation of Edsa Busway Project, which designates the innermost lane of Edsa as an exclusive lane for buses. While the EDSA busway project aims to provide more efficient and accessible public transport, its implementation is affecting private motorists. How to balance the interests of commuters on one hand and private motorists on the other is now a challenge for authorities. The administration has made it a priority to make rail transit and railways a major component of the country's mass transport system. Now to complement this, the government is strengthening the education and training of rail workers through the establishment of the Philippine Railways Institute. Another batch of railway workers has successfully undergone a retraining with a PRI. The Philippine Railways Institute, or PRI, held online graduation rights for 76 trainees who successfully completed a retraining course and passed a comprehensive examination on passenger management fare and ticketing management, commercial train driving, and railway maintenance. The trainees came from operations and maintenance personnel of various railways or rail transit operators who have at least six months work experience. The 76 trainee graduates compromised the 15th batch of trainees to have undergone the RT course since the PRI began conducting the training beginning October of 2019. The PRI plans to conduct the training of batches until 2020. Under the supervision of the DOTR, the PRI is the primary planning, implementing, regulating, and administrative agency on human resource development in the Philippine railway sector. The establishment of railway infrastructure and the rail operators can help the country with providing employment opportunities for many who lost jobs as a consequence of the pandemic. They don't call it subsidies outright, but that is what government service contracting program is all about. And the first beneficiaries of the program have signed on for its benefits. The first batch of transport cooperatives have signed up for the service contracting program of the government that provides incentives to public utility vehicle drivers and operators to continue ferrying passengers amid the pandemic. Under the program, government will pay qualified PUVs for transport services rendered in respective identified routes. The payment is meant to offset lost revenues from having to operate under severely restricted capacity to comply with community quarantine protocols. PUVs will keep their fares they collect from passengers, even as government pays for plying their routes. Among transport cooperatives who signed for the incentive subsidy program and participated in ceremonial signing ceremony 
with the DOTR and the LTFRB are the Tandang Sora, Visayas Avenue, Quezon City Hall Jeepney Operators and Drivers Association, Incorporated, led by its president, Noel Aguilar. Novaliches Malinta Transport Cooperative, led by its chairman, Roger De Gracia, and Mega Manila Consortium Corporation, led by its president, Roberto Torres, and Move as One Coalition Convener, Robert C. While allowing PUVs to continue operating under COVID-19 pandemic protocols, the DOTR believes the service contracting program will encourage safer public transport as drivers no longer need to race each other for passengers or to ignore capacity restrictions and take on more passengers than they should. The service contracting program is supposed to benefit at most 60,000 PUV drivers and operators over three months. Expect more transport cooperatives to sign up for the program. Those are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. December 1 is the final, final deadline, says the DOTR. We're ready, says tollway operators. But motorists are asking, is the RFID system really ready? Morning Forum looks into why some motorists are still asking the same question. For the DOTR, it's full steam ahead for the implementation of full cashless transactions at tollways beginning December 1, 2020. The date can no longer be deferred. The primary purpose of Department Order 2020-012, requiring cashless or contactless transactions for all vehicles traveling on toll expressways, is to prevent COVID-19 transmissions, which is a matter of extreme importance, the DOTR said in a press statement. The DOTR issued the statement after a member of Congress, Representative Wes Gatalian, called for another deferment, at least until there is interoperability of the RFID transactions at tollways controlled by two management groups. Interoperability means that motorists need only one RFID for use at tollways. At present, motorists have to acquire two RFIDs, the Auto Sweep RFID for use at the Skyway, SLEX, NIA X, Star Tollway, MCX, and DPX, the Easy Trip RFID for use at NLEX, SCTEX, Gavitex, and Calax. But aside from the issue of interoperability, motorists who regularly use tollways and already have the required RFIDs are complaining of having to undergo a longer time exiting toll gates than when most motorists were still paying toll at cash lanes. Social media have seen posts going viral of videos showing long lines of vehicles moving at turtle pace at RFID lanes. Videos also showed vehicles having to back up and go forward a number of times before the RFID readers work. Many showed vehicles cutting perpendicular across lines to head to cash lanes because either they are tired of waiting in line or because their RFIDs are not working properly. RFID users are also complaining that their accounts show ghost tollway payments, some posting pictures of their online records showing they were charged toll when they were never at the tollways that day. Others are complaining that while the Toll Regulatory Board, or TRB, says that the RFIDs are issued free of charge and motorists only have to pay toll, the fine print on the applications lists a number of added costs. Others noted that whenever they load credit on RFID accounts, they are charged fees. They ask if this is allowed by the TRB. Also going viral are posts pointing out that a provision in the fine print says that if you don't use the tollways for a given number of days, your RFID account will be deactivated and you need to pay another fee to get it reactivated. And again comes the question, is this allowed by the TRB? Does TRB even know about this? Meanwhile, tollway operators are saying they are ready for 100% cashless transactions and that they are working continuously to make the process more efficient. The DOTR is also assuring motorists that through the TRB, 
continues to engage with and coordinate with the private toll operators to thresh out issues, undertake the necessary operational measures, and present solutions in order to fully realize the interoperability project. If similar complaints continue, the long lines at RFID lanes, ghost transactions heading to December 1, the question about the readiness for full cashless transactions at tollways remain relevant and unanswered. Motorists may have to resign themselves to continuing to experience problems with electronic toll collection or cashless tollway transactions even after December 1. But they should also ask TRB about the fees and other charges contained in the fine print of RFID application forms. Motorists should also be aware that under the TRB guidelines for implementation of full electronic toll collection, toll operators must immediately act on referral by the TRB of formal complaint by the motorist relating to the ETC system. Failure to act and resolve such motorist complaints without any justifiable reason within three business days from the time of referral of the complaint shall automatically result in the resolution of the complaint by the TRB in the motorist's favor, it added. There seems to be no stopping the DOTR from enforcing the decision for full cashless toll collections. Morris will again just have to grin and bear with the consequences of the policy. Maybe it will be a happy grin. Maybe not. That's more informed this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the... Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA 2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Mitsubishi Expander Cross. And you are back with us here on Motoring Today. And in line with our lifelong commitment to promote road safety, here is this week's road safety tip in cooperation with Toyota Motor Philippines. If you are on a multi lane highway, may bit na ipinagbabawal ang tumawid papunta sa kabilang parte ng highway. As seen on the animation, you can overtake on your lane provided that it is safe to do so. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. From Mitsubishi Motors Philippines, here is Payan Chaper this week. Payong chopper lang, kaibigan. Ako si ka Jojo Martin, isang kapwa niyo chopper, maging maayos sa pananamit tuwing papasada. 
Kung gusto natin makarami ng pasahero, gawin natin presentable ang ating mga sarili sa tuwing tayo ay magmamaneho. Ugaliing isuot ang uniform ng samahan ng iyong kinabibilangan kapag papasada sa daan. Iwasang magsuot ng mga pambahay na damit, katulad ng sando at chinelas, kung ayaw mo ang pasahero ang magalit at umiwas. Tandaan, kapag maayos ang kasuotan, pasahero ay iyong kaibigan. Ito po si ka Jojo Martin, payong chopper lang kaibigan mula sa isang kapwa niyo chopper. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA 2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. The Mitsubishi Mirage. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. We start with the latest news and developments. The third round of the 2020 AAP Digital Rally Trophy again drew a horde of entries to the online e-motorsports using the Dirt Rally 2.0 game, either on PlayStation 4 and PC. At the end of the third round on a virtual Dirt Rally course, meant to simulate conditions of the 1993 Rally of Subic, Russell Reyes piped Lance Gubala for the top spot in the leadership board. The difference between them was just 554 thousandths of a second. Coming in third, 18 seconds plus behind the two leaders was Matt Liwako. Rounding out the top 10 are Christian Navarro, 4th, John Lawrence, 5th, Mark Lester M. Rosales, 6th, Inigo Roses, 7th, Stephen Cantiller, 8th, King Asuncion, 9th, and John C. Reyes, 10th. After three rounds, first round winner Lance Gubala is on top of the championship standings with 50 points. Russell Reyes is second with 44, and Matt Liwako with 32. And that's this week's World of Motorsports. Motoring Today continues right after this break. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA 2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 
2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Welcome back to Mooring Today. Let's now take a look at what's happening in the local auto industry. After months under community quarantine restrictions, people have embraced online shopping as the safe way to go about buying necessities in these COVID-19 times. This is even extending to buying or at least window shopping for cars. Many businesses, and this is true worldwide, have come to believe that this may continue moving forward even after COVID-19 has been defeated. This puts on onus on business, including those in the auto sector, to have a strong presence online with websites that are not only easy to navigate but also exciting to visit. Mitsubishi Motors Philippines Corporation has launched an all-new website, www.mitsubishi-motors.com.ph, which it says comes with optimized user interface for mobile, desktop, and tablet devices, with improved page loading performance and scalability for site visitors. The new Mitsubishi website aims to provide customers an experience akin to actually visiting any of its 55 dealerships nationwide. A car configurator tool allows customers to view and select their preferred vehicle from the extensive Mitsubishi model lineup, as well as select particular variants, colors, and specifications. It also comes with quick loading and easy to use dynamic 360 degree exterior and interior viewer to check out their dream cars in detail from the inside and out. Through the website, customers book test drives and service appointments, request quotations from their preferred dealerships from the comfort of their homes. Mitsubishi said it plans to integrate a chatbot functionality, allowing visitors and customers to instantly receive answers to frequently asked questions about the brand, its products, and services. If the Mazda MX-5, among the world's most popular two-seater open-top sports car, is your dream car, you can now order one to your specifications. Mazda Philippines has launched the Build Your Personal MX-5 program. Local buyers can now pre-order the 2021 model year MX-5, customized to their personal preferences. Mazda says 78 combinations are possible when the customer pre-orders their MX-5 to create one unique sports car. Buyers can have a choice of transmission, exterior color, interior trim, soft top, or retractable fastback, among other options. Mazda is known for its beautifully designed, superior quality, and meticulously engineered cars, says Stephen Tan, President and CEO of Mazda Philippines. The distinctive and dynamic nature of Mazda design has influenced us to be more creative on how we present our cars to our customers. That is why we are introducing the Build Your Personal MX-5 program. The customized pre-order will be initiated by a reservation fee in any of the 19 Mazda dealerships nationwide. How long will it take to get a personalized 2020 MX-5? Four to six months from order to delivery, said Mazda. Ford Philippines is targeting women as a new wave of customers for the Ford Ranger, or it may just be a nod to diversity. Whatever the motivation, Ford has launched the Ranger for Her campaign. The campaign has two faces, both beautiful and accomplished. Actress Isa Calzado is the face of the superhero side of the campaign, 
an advocacy program that positions the Ford Ranger as an enabler of good and meaningful deeds. Beauty queen and entrepreneur Rachel Peters is the face of the great driving road side of the campaign that puts the Ranger as a partner of reviving local tourism. Ford believes that the Ranger is the perfect vehicle for strong women who seek to make a difference in life, serving the community, enjoying life's adventures, and inspiring others to do the same. The Defenders much awaited by many enthusiasts will soon be in local shores. Coventry Motors Corporation, authorized distributor of Jaguar vehicles, parts and accessories in the Philippines, announced that it will be bringing the Land Rover Defender 90 and 110 powered by diesel engines. The Defenders arriving early in the first quarter of 2021 will be powered by a state-of-the-art Ingenium D240 twin-turbocharged diesel powertrain mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission. Chris Ward, President, Coventry Motors Corporation, said the Defender was well-received in the Philippine market. With a growing following and demand for this truly exceptional vehicle, introducing a new powertrain and an additional body option comes as a natural progression in line with the brand's intention to satisfy every driver's desire to own and drive the most capable Land Rover yet. The Defender 90 and 110 may be pre-ordered at all British car showrooms in Edza Greenhills and at BGC Boutique Showroom. Motoring Today now brings you our Car of the Week on Showcase. Courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Honda has just rolled out the new 2020 CRV. It arrived late in the year, but just in time for the Burr months. Traditionally, the best quarter for selling automobiles. This edition of Showcase takes a look at what the top of the line CRV offers. The 2020 Honda CRV has just made its digital debut in the local market, teeming with exciting options for seven seater mid size SUVs. Can it stand out in the crowd? Honda certainly believes it can, especially its top of the line variant, the Honda CRV SX Diesel 9 Automatic All Wheel Drive with Honda Sensing. The 2020 Honda CRV now 4,623 millimeters long, 1,855 millimeters wide, and 1,668 millimeters tall, with a 2,662 millimeter long wheelbase and 208 millimeter ground clearance, arrives with a refreshed fascia. The most noticeable change is the more aggressive looking bumper that holds the LED fog lamps. The chrome bumper accents and the chrome grille wing add sophistication to the more commanding CRV look. The CRV rear also got a makeover with smoke tinted rear taillights and redesigned bumper. Differentiating the SX from its lesser, though no less good looking siblings, are the panoramic sunroof, sequential front turn signals, as well as 18 inch alloy wheels. Then, there's a cool and convenient hands-free power tailgate. The top-of-line CRV also gets roof rails, full LED headlights with auto leveling and high beam support system, power adjustable and power folding door mirrors with side turn signals, auto rain sensing front wipers, intermittent with washer and auto wipe rear wipers, tailgate spoiler, silver bumper skid garnish, shark's fin antenna, and mud guards. The CRV is not to be left behind by the smart entry with push start system bandwagon. This comes standard in all 2020 CRV variants made available locally. This makes it very convenient to get into the spacious cabin of the CRV. 
The CRV SX can sit seven comfortably in black leather upholstered seats that complement the piano black and two-tone wood trim finish. The third row seat splits 50-50. The top of line CRV features a front passenger seat that power adjusts four ways. The driver is spoiled by a seat that comes with an eight way power adjust with four way lumbar support. The three spoke leather upholstered steering wheel tilts and telescopes, making it very convenient for finding the perfect driving position. It comes with controls for the multi info display and the TFT instrument cluster audio and hands-free phone. From the comfortable perch, the driver has every control within reach, including those for the intelligent dual zone automatic air conditioning system. Also within easy reach is the seven inch touchscreen advanced display audio with navigation system that comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth, and plays through eight speakers that includes four tweeters. The CRV SX also comes with wireless charger, USB ports in the center console, a rear center console, roof air conditioning vents with independent controls. Underneath the hood of the CRV SX Diesel 9 automatic all-wheel drive is a 1.6 liter DOHC IDTEC turbo diesel engine that generates 120 PS at 4,000 revolutions per minute and maximum torque of 300 newton meters at 2000 rpm. The engine drives all four wheels via a nine-speed automatic transmission. Over the years, the CRV has been known to provide a car-like ride on city streets and well-paved roads with the versatility of a higher ground clearance to take on rougher byways. The 2020 Honda CRV continues this tradition especially with the all-wheel drive variant that rides on 235 by 60 R18 103H tires and a suspension featuring front McPherson struts and multi-link system in the rear. Stopping power comes from an all-wheel disc brake system ventilated in front and solid in the rear. Honda has made driving and riding the CRV all the more safer with the G-Body, dual front SRS, side and side curtain airbags, the anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, three-point ELR seatbelts for seven, ISOFIX and child safety lock. Driving is made all the easier with the various systems like agile handling assist, vehicle stability assist, hill start assist, Honda lane watch, multi-view reverse camera with dynamic guidelines, front and rear corner sensors. The 2020 Honda CR-V SX goes a little bit farther in helping driving all the more safe with Honda Sensei, a suite of cutting edge driver assist functions that include adaptive cruise control, low speed follow, collision mitigation braking system, lane keep assist system, road departure mitigation, forward collision warning and lane departure warning. The top of line CR-V is available in four colors, cosmic blue metallic, Ignite Red Metallic, Modern Steel Metallic, Platinum White Pearl. One has to add 20,000 pesos to the 2,150,000 pesos suggested retail price. The Honda CRV has always had a good standing in the local mid size SUV that started back in the day when it was assembled here and sold in numbers that impressed even Honda Japan. Its popularity waxed and waned as the competition stepped up. That's our featured vehicle on this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program, 100% worry-free driving.
voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. We now have our segment that dwells on the wide array of motoring problems, not only in the metro, but all over the country as well. This is where we present problems, refer to us, or we ourselves see, and hope to fully find solutions for. Here's our public service segment, brought to you by Honda Cars Philippines. It was a Saturday morning when news came out about truckers barricading several entry and exit points on NLEX. This is in protest of the temporary rerouting of 12-wheeler dump trucks while the major rehabilitation of the Kendaba Viaduct is ongoing. According to the NLEX Corporation, they have reached out back in August to national and local government agencies and offices as well as affected Pampanga truckers regarding the urgency of repairing the Candaba Viaduct to assure its viability as a road link between North and Central Luzon and Metro Manila. Apart from this, the tollway company said that public advisories on the closure of certain lanes and the implementation of temporary counterflow traffic measures were issued. A total of 150 trucks barricaded eight toll gates of NLEX. This has obviously caused heavy traffic and has affected motorists, particularly those in the area on that day. The protesters only removed the trucks when Pampanga Governor Dennis Pineda appealed to them. He also committed to take the issue to national leaders. NLEX Corporation, on the other hand, said that dialogues are ongoing to demonstrate proper and compliant procedures for loading their trucks. With unfortunate events happening, we do hope that all parties involved will be able to resolve the issues and come up with a win-win solution. And that's our public service segment from Honda Cars Philippines. And should you yourself encounter more problems that need immediate attention, please feel free to contact us. Please check out our details on your screen. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on our social media accounts. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 34th year, of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. Stay healthy and be vigilant at all times. On behalf of Butch Gamboa, our dad, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.